When I was nine, I was sitting and watching science show. I was so excited. That wasn't just a lesson, that was something more powerful. And for me, it was the point of no return. I fell in love with science forever. When I had chemistry in eighth grade, I felt like a freak, because I was so interested in science, well, most of my classmates didn't. Why? It seemed boring for them, but still, why? If you remember your own time at school, you will remember that arts lesson, you're drawing and painting, and sports lesson, you are running and playing active games, but science lesson, you are reading book and solving tasks. And it seems there is no connection with the real world. But if you remember, interesting science experiments and laboratory works, you are a lucky one, because you had a great teacher. And there are a lot of great teachers in the world who can ignite spark of curiosity in children. Then they are too few to ignite everyone's heart. And I have a question to you. Are you ready to wait for this lucky moment that someone will ignite spark of curiosity in your child? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to wait for this luck and I wanted to create this sparkle of curiosity, this passion that someone did to me. And four years ago, we established a company called Laboratorium. Now there is a place where children can explore the world through science experiments. And let me introduce my colleague Vladislav and co-founder with one exciting experiment. If you have two chemicals combined together, you will get one reaction. If you will mix three chemicals, you can wait up to three reactions. But here we have three liquids and wait, 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 wait. And three liquids and six chemicals in them. So let's combine. Just observe for a moment. How many reactions are happening in there? Eight, 10, or maybe 12? 50. There is happening 50 reactions. Someone could get confused about this number. Why so big? But this experiment represents something that's happening in us every day. When we eat food, we digest it and we get energy. And this is called Krebs cycle, the series of reactions in our body. So let it stay here and you can observe uh, moment at moment. So thank you, Vladislav. He will join us a bit later. There is a lot of different activities in the laboratorium. And it's like science theater, science school, science shows, and all these activities can inspire children. They, it can touch their minds and hearts. And within the last 12 months, about 50,000 children participated in our activities. But there are many more who desperately need someone who can ignite this sparkle, this spark of curiosity. And I'm here to encourage you to do this, that you can create this sparkle of, this spark of curiosity in your child, maybe in your friend's child, maybe brother's or sister's child, if you don't have that. So, let me share some experience. These are six ideas which are built up through our experience. And the first thing is that experimenting is a natural way of learning. So when you experiment, you do and then you fail. You do again and then you fail again. But these fails brings us to success. I don't know all of you personally, but I'm sure that you failed trying to do something important. 
But these fails didn't stop you. You persistently continued hundreds of times. It happened somewhere at age between 9 and 18 months. And your goal was start walking. And I doubt that you watched YouTube instructions or read a book, How to Walk, but you succeeded. I have seen nobody crawling today. <laughs> the second thing is, if you buy an astronomy book, get a telescope. Children are very curious. They want to know everything. And if child is interested in astronomy, parents will buy him a book, very nice, beautiful book, and there are colorful pictures, and that's great. Learning by books are great, but it shows us how other people see the world. There is no children personal experience. But personal experience is really important to get passion. And if you want to see a child be passionate about space, let him experience it through telescope. And let your kids do things they are interested in so they can get passionate about them. And they can find what really drives them. The third thing is that safety doesn't work without knowledge. Children don't think about dangers, risks, safety while they're exploring, and we as parents, we want to protect them. Like knife, electricity, gas, fire, all these things are too dangerous. Stop, don't do it. That's what we said, we want to keep them safe. But with keeping them safe, we're keeping them away from knowledge. But the knowledge is the best protection for them. And we have to challenge our children to, to do things so they can become smarter and safer in our future. In our science school, eight years old children, they are learning how to ignite matches. So we give them instructions, we give them gloves, goggles, and fireproof surface. But still, they are so fair. They, they're so afraid, they haven't done it before. But after a moment, they succeed. And you can see a smile and confidence on this face. Such a big difference just in a small moment of time. And now they know how to handle flame. So the fourth thing is, if if child asks you a question, then he's ready to explore. It's easy to say, I don't have time, rather than really help to find the answers. And uh, one day, my son asked me, Dad, why there are so many different materials, but all of them are made out of three particles? So he asked me about protons, electrons, neutrons, and this is what is taught in eighth grade, but he's only eight now. So we discussed, we played games, we draw about this. And in the, in the end, I decided to do something new. I gave him online test, and he passed. I was amazed about this. But still, if you don't know the answer, let your child's curiosity become your teacher. Take your child and find answers together. Sure, we parents, we don't know everything, and even teachers don't know everything, but we can encourage children to search, and we can show that learning is a lifelong process. The fifth thing is that the world, whole world is a big laboratory. Science doesn't happen just in, in a special laboratory somewhere, it's everywhere around. And uh, let me show one. For example, this balloon, if you take it, you're about to get scared. Vladislav, I need your help. He's my charger. And now you can take up some paper because static electricity is there and you can move I need some more charge.
you can remove aluminium can. And it seems simple, but still, you can move objects without touching them. It's like a magician, but with science. And every time when, we do, when you do something new, you're exploring, you're doing experiments, and people do experiments in dance, music, literature, and other fields, even if they don't realize it. And this is how masterpieces and inventions are created. I love when we do kids to do impossible. At one, at one lesson in a science school, we gave children to do balancing dragonfly. And one girl said, no, it's not possible. But after a moment, she held in her hand self-made, properly walking, balancing dragonfly. But it's not possible. It's not possible. And you can see how her world per perception changes. So challenge your children to experience something new out of their world perception. And the last thing is, science experiment is a very powerful tool to encourage, explore, and make this spark of curiosity. And children are ready to do experiences, anything they can find at home. And if you don't know how to start this experimentation, let us show one example. So, I invite you to go to the shop and buy very rare and expensive chemicals. Vinegar and baking soda. So, let's start, yes? Wait, wait, wait. Warning, do try this at home. <laughs> so we add some baking soda and some vinegar. And sure, you can see bubbles. They are fizzing and they are coming out, but probably you knew that. So, let's move on. If you add some color and soap, and then you add some vinegar, you can have a volcano. She's coming and coming and coming, and kids can do it for hours. So, but this is just the beginning. Now you can use a big glass, put there some baking soda, more, more, a lot. And then you add some vinegar, and you see these bubbles are coming and filling this glass with carbon dioxide. This is a very heavy gas, and you now can levitate bubbles over this carbon dioxide. Because it's heavier than air one and a half times. But let's use it for one more purpose. So we are going to light up some candles. And let's pour this carbon dioxide over these candles and wipe out the flames. You are a master of invisible forces now. But still, this is not all. Uh, so, you have to prepare some red tea and add a little bit of vinegar and baking soda. And you can see a beautiful and nice color changes. Just a red tea, I hope you drink it, and uh, baking soda vinegar, and then you can mix them together and get color changes what you like. But now, the most exciting. So, here we mixed baking soda and vinegar. When the reaction ends, we get new chemical, sodium acetate. Sure, for this experiment, you need to boil away some water, and here we have ready liquid, because the, it takes more than 15 minutes, so we are not going to show, but you can do it at home. But now, let's pour it. It instantly freezes in the crystals, and you can build any structure you want. <laughs> and
And this is just a baking soda and vinegar. We parents, we could be the best teachers for our children. And this hands-on experience is so important for them to get passion, to get this spark of curiosity. And don't wait for a lucky moment that someone will come and light up this spark of curiosity in your child. Take this initiative on yourself. Thank you.